competition is fun But hooking is the only way We're gonna show you how to catch some fish today Welcome to Fun Fishing, I'm Warren Trumpley. And I'm Alan Fong, but this ain't no fun fishing. What? No, this is Alan Fong Outdoors, you dingy. <laughs> Wrong decade. <laughs> yeah, that's 20 years ago. <laughs> Where you been? <laughs> yeah, I lost my hat and I lost my mind. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What else is new? Oh, I don't know. You had a bunch of questions on Alan Fong Outdoors. Yeah, so we have, you know, our listeners, guys that are watching, you know, Alan Fong Outdoors. They want comment. What, what would Alan do? The Mr. Q wanted to know uh, how to keep the snails out of the pots when you're out there crab fishing. If you keep your bait off the bottom of the pot, you'll have no leases or flies or any of them things on the bottom of your boat. But put the bait up high on the cage. So remember that when you're on the pot. <laughs> when you're uh, out there with the crab pots, how far north do you go? Eh, usually if you head up out of Bodega Bay, you want to go up by uh, Russian River or north. It's all sandy up there, so anywhere you dunk out there in 120 to 150 feet, you'll catch all you want. Well, that's another question we had is, what type of bottom do you look for? Very sandy and flat. So you don't, if you get any rock crabs in your trap, you need to leave. But you want really flat and on your fish finder, if you're using 2D sonar, you look at how oh, everybody has colored graphs now. Mm -hmm. And when you see the yellow and really dense and bright yellow, you need to keep moving till the red, till it goes away, kind of get like a red hue to it, and then you're in sand. Yeah. G, G Long asked about taking his kids out crabbing. So, Alan, okay, you've got the kids out there. They don't need a license, but do they need to have a validation stamp? If you're using traps, yes, you need a validation stamp. If you're using hoops, no, you don't. So the law is kind of funny. If, you, if you're off the pier or whatever, and you're using a ring, mm -hmm. uh, you don't need to have a validation stamp. Only if you're using the traps, the okay. ones that are enclosed. Okay. No matter how old you are. Even you need one <laughs> at that old ripe age. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Nice guy. So when's your birthday? Never mind. <laughs> You can't just put your finger right there on the well, line I've, where you I've stop. got to read it. I'm a slow reader here, so I, I want to put it in my own words. <laughs> Folks, this is not fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an ad libber. Whoa! Whoa! Jeez. That was a duck. No, it wasn't. That was no duck. It was a bass. It was a bass, okay. More questions from G. Long about uh, the traps. Are they, they worth $100 a knob? Is that a good investment? Oh yeah, they are. So traps, technically, when, you, when they open the season for traps, you could put them out and leave them. You'll catch bigger crabs. They're actually bigger. You, the bigger ones seem to get out of the hoop, but on the traps, they can't get out. So, you so have, yeah, it's worth it. So you have the hoops and then you have the traps? Correct. Well, I'm confused, but that's okay. You're always confused. <laughs> okay. Well, G. Prouty asked, uh, for perspective purposes, and generally speaking, how many different spots on the delta do you have for crappie? And you found crappie. I have a lot of spots. <clears throat> Usually in the delta, if you focus on dead ends, flus in the wintertime, usually you can pretty much locate them pretty easy. Well, how does that compare to Clear Lake? <clears throat> Clear Lake's a little different because the delta is navigable water, so it's got always has running water. Lakes are totally different. So usually in the delta, the winter and the fall is the best time of the year to go after them. I think in the springtime and the summer, they go deeper and they're harder to locate. But in Clear Lake, for example, there's no current. So usually you can find them all year round but usually in the spring they're easier to, to catch mm -hmm. because they're more vulnerable. They move up to spawn there in shallower water. Proud OG also asked about uh, live scope and active imaging and, and how you use that with uh, crappie fishing. Yeah, it's been a big help. Um, I just got the active live hooked up on my boat. Probably used it maybe six, eight times and um, it's totally different than 2D sonar. It's almost like a new learning curve, but when I figured it out, 
as you see on the video. You could actually see the fish swimming in the grass. You see them in the logs. It's a big plus. It's going to change everything when it comes to fishing. That's cheating. I'm good at that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, the, the question also contained a question about site imaging. Do you use site imaging at all? Oh, yeah. If you go back and look at my video on crappie fishing on segment one, mm -hmm. I actually was going down the middle of the slough grafting and you could see logs they stick out like a sore thumb it's like having a video monitor underneath the water so i was locating logs and weeds and boom you could see actually see the fish right in them and i went and caught them you caught them that's right <laughs> got lucky <laughs> yeah right <laughs> regarding crappie they're great game fish and uh, proud og also wanted to know you'd like to see more on freshwater lakes and rivers so so how would the the fisheries be managed to do that? There's more crappie in all our lakes than anybody ever. Nobody really goes after them. Um, I've found them, you know, in the main lakes like Clear Lake, but there's Berryessa, there's all these lakes, Amador, Comanche, they're all full of crappie, but nobody goes after them. So I think- How come? I don't know, maybe they don't know they're there. Okay. But there, if you go on the Fishing Games website, mm -hmm. they'll list all the lakes around here that have crappie in them. So it's very easy to look on there. It's just nobody goes after them. Okay. Well, James Kramer asked the question uh, about using worms to catch crappie in the wintertime. So can you use that instead of jigs? Yeah, you can, but you probably won't do as well. It's better to use anything like a minnow imitation because they're actually feeding on shad. Okay. So they don't, you know, I mean, you could catch them on worms, but they'll bite a lot better on anything that imitates a little minnow. So you guys could watch segment two. I actually had um, worms with me, and when I put it on and tried, I was catching small crappie and perch, so I went back to the plastics. So I didn't even show it on the video. So use it most of the time, you'll never see me put bait on my hook. Again, Proud OG wanted to know about uh, using jigs with the uh, live target and why the jig looks so big and the fish don't. You know, that's funny that he asked because I was mentioning it to my producer that that 116th ounce jig shows up and then when a fish comes and eats it, I think it's the angle that the fish swims in. But some of the times I see the fish actually I look like a tail wiggling. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I just see like a round, just like it looks like my jig. And then I've seen them hit it, set the hook and bring them up. And they're like huge. Maximus wants to know about boat speed when you're using the uh, side imaging and active imaging. Yeah, whenever you're using um, side imaging or down imaging, even 2D sonar, you should be going as slow as your boat will go. So you want to be idling. You don't want to, you know, the side scan and down scan, they run at a 455 to 800 kilohertz. Mm -hmm. You have to be going slow. So if you're going over two, three mile an hour, it probably won't work. Okay. So you want to graph when you're going slow. And so many times I've always said, if you're in the Delta or the river, you want to be grafting going with the current. Okay, so with, for Maximus, just to help him, what's the difference between the 455 and the 800? Well, 455 looks a little wider than 800, but it's more noisier. So on all the frequencies, I've always used the highest one. So I usually run 800, the narrower beam, but it's a lot clearer picture. And I showed that on my Crappy 2 one, where when I put it on 200 kilohertz, it was clear as a bell. Put it on 83, it looks wider and it's more noisy and the screen went all crazy. Okay. So always use the higher frequency and you have a lot better picture. If you have questions, you can put them in the comments of each video. And at the end of the month, the last Friday of each month, Alan will answer those questions. Good, bad, or indifferent, whether it's hunting, fishing, or very personal things. I'll get back to you. Woo! <laughs> She'll be like, see you in 20 years. <laughs> it's the question. He didn't say that. He didn't say that. Oh, you did. Learn to read, dude. I did. I said trap. I'm just listening to this. <clears throat> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. Shit, we'll be here till dark. <laughs> yeah. You have lights? <laughs> oh, gosh. My blooper reel. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> what would Alan Fong do? <laughs> the boys, first time back. Cheers. Row, row, row your boat. <laughs> Fun fishing. Yeah. Yeah, I've got one on my boat. Right now, I have to That's two of them. That's good stuff. Fishing is fun, but hooking is the only way. We're going to show you how to catch some fish today.